Lesson number 21 The journey to the great Oz The wizard of Oz is a well-known fantasy of children's literature It tells the story of Dorothy who is whisked with her dog Toto by the cyclone to the wonderful land of Oz there she meets the tin woodman who needs a heart the scarecrow who needs brains and the cowardly lion who needs bravery they all went to see the wizard of oz the only person who can help them Yes, an account of a part of the journey to the Emerald City of Oz, where the wizard lives. Read the Wizard of Oz to find out what happens next. The Wizard of Oz was written by Lehman Frank Baum. He has written many other books about Oz. This classic novel was also made into a movie. This was to be an eventful day for the travelers. They had hardly been walking an hour when they saw. before them a great ditch that crossed the road and divided the forest as far as they could see on either side it was a very wide ditch and when they crept up to the edge and look into it they could see it was also very deep and there were many big jagged rocks at the bottom the sides were so steep that none of them could climb down and for a moment it seemed that their journey must end what shall we do asked dorothy despairingly i haven't the faintest idea said the tin woodman and the lion shook his shaggy mane and looked thoughtful but the scarecrow said we cannot fly that is certain neither can we climb down into this great ditch therefore if we cannot jump over it we must stop where we are i think i could jump over it said the cowardly lion after measuring the distance carefully in his mind then we are all right answered the scarecrow for you can carry us all over on your back one at a time well i'll try it said the lion who will go first i will declared the scarecrow for if you found that you could not jump 
over the gulf dorothy would be killed or the tin woodman badly dented on the rocks below but if i am on your back it will not matter so much for the fall would not hurt me at all i am terribly afraid of falling myself said the cowardly lion but i suppose there is nothing to do but try it so get on my back and we will make the attempt the scray crow sat upon the lion's back and the big beast walked to the edge of the gulf and crouched down why doesn't you run and jump asked the scray crow because that isn't the way we lions do these things he replied then giving a great spring he shot through the air and landed safely on the other side they were all greatly pleased to see how easily he did it and after the scray crow had got down from his back the lion sprang across the ditch again dorothy thought she would go next so she took toto in her arms and climbed on the lion's back on the lion's back holding tightly to his money with one hand the next moment it seemed as if she were flying through the hair and then before she had time to think about it she was safe on the other side the lion went back a third time and got the tin woodman and then they all sat down for a few moments to give the beast a chance to rest for his great leaps that made his breath short and he panted like a big dog that has been running too long they found the forest very thick on this side and it looked dark and gloomy after the lion had rested they started along the road of yellow brick silently wandering each in his own mind if ever they would come to the end of the woods and reach the bright sunshine again to add to their discomfort they soon heard strange noises in the depths of the forest and the lion whispered to them that it was in this part of the country that the kalidas lived what are the kalidas asked the girl they are monstrous beasts with bodies like bears and heads like tigers replied the lion and with claws 
so long and sharp that they could tear me in two as easily as I could kill Toto. I am terribly afraid of the Kalidas. I am not surprised that you are returned Dorothy. They must be dreadful beasts. The lion was about to reply when suddenly they came to another gulf across the road. But this one was so broad and deep that the lion knew at once it could not leap across it. So they sat down to consider what they should do and after serious thought the scarecrow said here is a great tree standing close to the ditch if the tin woodman can chop it down so that it will fall to the other side we can walk across it easily. That is a first rate idea, said the lion. One would almost suspect you had brains in your head instead of straw. The woodman set to work at once and, and so sharp was his axe that the tree was soon chopped nearly through. Then the lion put his strong front legs against the tree and pushed with all his might and slowly the big tree tipped and fell with a crash across the ditch with its top branches on the other side. They had just started to cross this square bridge when a sharp growl made them all look up and to their horror they saw running toward them two great bees with bodies like bears and heads like tigers. They are the Kalidas, said the cowardly lion, beginning to tremble. Quick, cried the scarecrow, let us cross over. So Dorothy went first, holding Toto in her arms, the tin woodman followed and the scarecrow came next. The lion, although he was certainly afraid, turned to face the Kalidas and then he gave so loud and terrible a roar that Dorothy screamed and the scarecrow fell over backward while even the fierce beasts stopped short and looked at him in surprise. But seeing they were bigger than the lion and remembering that they were two of them and only one of them, the Kalidas again rushed forward and the lion crossed over the tree and turned to see what they would do next. Without stopping at instants, the fierce beast also began to cross the tree and the lion said to Dorothy, We are lost for they will surely 
tear us to pieces with the sharp claws but stand close behind me and i will fight them as long as i am alive wait a minute called the scray crow he had been thinking what was the best to be done and now he asked the woodman to chop away the end of the tree that rested on the side of the ditch the tin woodman began to use his axe at once and just as the two kalidas were nearly across the tree fell with a crash into the gulf carrying the ugly snarling brutes with it and both were dashed to pieces on the sharp rocks at the bottom well said the cowardly lion drawing a long breath of relief i see we are going to live a little while longer and i am glad of it for it must be a very uncomfortable thing not to be alive those creatures frightened me so badly that my heart is beating yet ah said the tin woodman sadly i wish i had a heart to beat this adventure made the travelers more anxious than ever to get out of the forest and they walked so fast that dorothy became tired and had to ride on the lion's back to the great joy the trees became thinner the further the advance and in the afternoon they suddenly came upon a broad river flowing swiftly just before them on the other side of the water they could see the road of yellow brick running through a beautiful country with green meadows dotted with bright flowers and all the road bordered with trees hanging full of delicious fruits they were greatly pleased to see this delightful country before them from the wizard of oz by l frank baum